Another one! Aston Villa are one of the clubs keeping an eye on Joe Gomez's situation. This one is coming from Graham Bailey. So, it's an interesting link. Joe Gomez, a vast amount of experience in the Premier League. Champions League, he's got that experience as well. His second most minutes have come in the Champions League as well. So, Aston Villa currently are operating on a one-in, one-out basis now with our squad depth, how stacked it is. We have to fill quotas from the Champions League and Premier League. The squad is very, very stacked at the moment. So that is why we're in the one-in, one-out motion. Left back, we know Carlos. We've got that link with Carlos as well. To Fulham, he may be potentially leaving. But Joe Gomez is an interesting one. He's a player, like I say, with a lot of experience. But the big thing about Joe Gomez is, is that he can play across the whole back four. Left back, right back, centre off. He can play absolutely everywhere. So when you're looking at Villa's squad and, and, and where we're at and where it can be shaping up, that versatility, pretty much like midfielders that we've got at Villa as well, is actually quite key because we've got Matson on the left. We've got the two other left backs. Mings is back. He's going to be back in training this week, apparently. So we've got depth there with him and Pau. We've got the right-hand side with Nadelkovic, Cash, Konsa. We've got Konsa at sort of right, right-sided centre-half. So having that flexibility with a player that's quite versatile, that might not be the first choice, could be an absolute wise move for Aston Villa in the sense that he could play across that whole back line and he could be moved around. So I think it's it's a good link. I think it's a good link because that's where he could potentially play. I think he's a good player. I don't think he's absolutely out there and I'd go 100 mile an hour to get him to sign for Villa. But I think it could potentially be quite a savvy one. I think he was involved in that Newcastle and Gordon move that didn't really come to any fruition. So... Let's have a look at his stats. Let's have a look where he is. Villa fans, let me know your thoughts. Are you a fan? Do you think it could be good cover? Do you think he could potentially take that spot from, from Carlos? But I'd love to know your thoughts on, on where you're at as well. And so we'll go to our tried and trusted sofa score. And we'll have a look at how he's been doing over the course of last season as well. So 27, he's just turned 27, May 23rd, right-footed. So that, again, would fit that profile of him playing on that right-hand side. We've got a sofa score last season of 6.89, which is not too bad. It's just below that seven mark. You can see on that heat map as well that, you know, he's predominantly on the left. He can play on the right. He, he, can, he can move around, which is, you know, a credit to his adaptability and his versatility. His key strengths are his aerial duels, which, from a Villa point of view, would be quite big as well. So uh, we know that we are lacking airily. Well, we were last season. This season, bringing in the profile of Onana, Baron Echer, like we've got those that height profile in our team now, which is good. So he played 32 times, started 17, scored no goals. He'd got one assist. His passing accuracy per game is at 86%. In his own half at 91%, which is absolutely outstanding. Opposition half at 78%. Accuracy of his long balls, 59%. Let's have a look at his defending then. So we're at 1.5 tackles per game, 3.5 ball recoveries per game. We've got 1.4 clearances per game. Successful dribbles at 56%. Total duels at 54 Ground duels at 48 And those aerials at 74 which is really, really high. And that would, you know, have a real good benefit on this Aston Villa side. So we've got his career with England under 16, 17, 19, 21s, and he's made 15 appearances for the England senior side. We've got some of his minutes through here then. So Premier League, he's played 9,555 minutes. That's over 140 appearances. Champions League, 36 with 2,221. So that Champions League experience, exactly what we're after. He's got a couple of, well, he's got a Champions League trophy in his cabinet at home. He's got an FA Cup as well and a Premier League. So he's got some trophies. He's, he's, he's a winner. He's won stuff. So 
I think this would probably would be a good a good signing for Villa, whether we were to pay anywhere near that twenty eight million pound market value there would be another thing. But I think like as the title says, we're one of the clubs keeping a close eye on him. And I think as fans we should probably keep a little bit of a close eye on him as well. So an interesting rumour. Nice to have a rumour. We haven't had a rumour for a few days. So uh, yeah, interesting one. Joe Gomez to Aston Villa coming from Graham Bailey as well. Right. Didn't do a match reaction from the last preseason game. It was very, very late in the in the morning when uh, I shut the stream down. Uh, so thoughts on preseason. There's been a lot made of the three losses. And I'm still in the same camp that I, that I was in before. I'm not bothered whatsoever about the results in pre-season. I think where we are as a team is probably what I'm about to say, to be fair. So, last season, qualified for the Champions League, we've got a core team who are well in tune with Unai Emery on how he works and how we go about our business, how we play, how we function. And those players will hopefully go up another level this season and flourish even more. But what has happened is, is we've had an influx of a lot of new players, more players than probably what we've had in a long, long time. And I think with that comes a sense of those players having to adapt having to learn, having to listen and having to grow and having to be coached into a brand new team. Now, take, for example, last preseason. Last preseason, on day one, every single player turned up to day one, played all the friendlies, and that's how that preseason works. This preseason has been completely different. It has been staggered with players that haven't been on internationals a new player might come in. Players that have then sort of played at the Euros or played in competitions and come back a little bit later. And then we've got players such as Watkins, Duran. We've got Conte and Martinez who are back this week. So that complete staggered phase has been probably a little bit more difficult for the preparation of what we've gone through. Now, what happens if we'd only signed a couple of players such as last preseason, we have our core group of players, the whole squad, and we just integrate a couple into a position. But then we've got first team as senior players that are playing all of the games. Now, this preseason, we've got a vast amount of players that are just here, there, and everywhere, such as a player like Dobbin. Dobbin, who's not a centre forward who I don't think we're going to play at centre-forward, is coming on in the second half of the game and playing as a striker. Now, he's not a striker, he's a winger. But he's having to come in and play as a striker solely to get some game time. And that's what's happening. Players are having to move around just so they can get some minutes. Luca Dean, second half against Club America, centre-back. Den Donker, centre-back. They're not centre-backs. So we're having to play players that are sort of out of position slightly, which, of course, is going to hamper the team a little bit and the performances. And I think it's just all about integrating and getting the new players ready and up to speed and ready to go on day one. Tielemans, no problem. He'll be ready to go on day one. Onana, ready to go. We've got McGinn, ready to go. So, players that are coming back this week, Watkins, one of our best players. Martinez, one of our best players. Consa, one of our best players. So, with those back in our team, the whole squad's together now and we're ready to go. So, I think these preseason games that are coming up now are going to be important for the players that have been on internationals. But there's just no... There's no, there's no worry for me because we're still a very, very good team and we only lost two players. So I, I think I'm 
totally comfortable, totally fine. And our window's not done yet. We're going to have movement. We're going to have some movement with players leaving. That's going to open the door with more players to come in. So I think pre-season, it's exactly what it is. And it's exactly what it should be. Getting players up to speed and getting them ready to go. And just get their minds working on how they're going to play for Villa. Some of the new players that have come in, Ealing Jr., Baronetcha, Barkley, Nedeljkovic, Dobbin, you know, all of those aren't going to play the first game. Some of them, we, we might not see them until probably game week 10, while they're still developing. Couple might be coming off the bench to help out, to sort of get ready to make their, their part. But some of them probably won't get no minutes whatsoever. It's it's probably going to be the players that last season that, that probably start the game. So I think that's where I'm at. I think you can't read anything into pre-season because... You know, I'll go back to last pre-season. We were absolutely unreal and we lost our first game 5-1. So I don't see where the correlation of pre-season wins go straight into our campaign. Like if we were battering teams 4 or 5 nil, you'd get everybody going but it's only pre-season. Don't read too much into the games because it's just pre-season. It's exactly what it is. So I think we're just in that sort of balance. And I've got a really good interview here that was that was from the press conference before the last game. And I imagine a lot of it is still in date because he, his mindset is exactly the same. So this is from Unai Emery. He said, of course, we're in pre-season. This is the first objective we have in pre-season, which is to try to adapt new players to try and build again the team with the players we have. And with some players still away coming back next week, the last four players, results now are not relevant, but we don't want to lose. We want to build strong structure in our mind as well as winning mentality. And it's been positive. It's been positive even with the results the game against Leipzig, we played more or less against one team we want to play because they are going to play in Champions League. It's very good as well to try to analyse and try to test the level they have with our level. So he's constantly going to be learning. He's going to be learning a lot of things about the players, the positions, how they are, etc. So solely based on Unai Emery, it's vitally, vitally important that he gets all of the information that he needs before the season starts. He also finished on this. I am positive. I believe with some change we did with the squad, refreshing some players, we will be competitive this year like I want to be, but we have a lot of work to do. So Unai's positive. I'm positive. Uno is confident. I'm confident. So we'll end it on that one. That preseason is exactly what it is. We could lose every single preseason game and beat West Ham on the first game of the season. Job done. Back into the swing of things. Let's go. So yeah, we got Joe Gomez. Friendlies. You know, I saw Posca Coglu as well. He mentioned that you don't get no points in preseason as well. So I think a lot of these managers are being asked the same certain questions and they're getting the same answers back. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. So, Joe Gomez, Villa fans, let me know your thoughts. Up the Villa.